Hey, what is up, guys? This is Cash Freak Tim from CashFreak.com, and today we're talking about GSAC. This is part three of our multi part tutorial talking about GSAC. Part one, we covered the basics. In part two, we went over how to import a pocket query into GSAC. And this is part three, and we're going to be talking about how to do filtering. What filtering is, is it allows you to take that big list of geocaches we imported and filter things out based by a certain set of criteria. It's one of my favorite features of GSAC. It's really powerful and it's a lot of fun. Before we get into that though, I want to talk to you about something I briefly mentioned in the last tutorial, but I wanted to cover it in a little bit more depth. The first time you go to import a pocket core into GSAC, you probably got this screen. And basically what this is saying is Groundspeak updated the version of pocket queries to include attributes. And attributes are a specific set of criteria that a geocache owner puts into their geocache about the area. Um, these are some examples that are on the geocaching.com website. For example, you know, dogs are welcome. You know, this thing's going to require climbing gear. You might need a flashlight. Uh, it's a dangerous area. You know, scenic view. Stealth might be required. All kinds of different things. But these are not included in our pocket queries by default. So that's kind of what this screen is telling us. And it's pretty easy to fix. All you need to do is click the link and it's going to take you over to your account page in geocaching.com. You're going to scroll all the way to the bottom. You're going to go to your preferences. You're going to click on change. Then you're going to scroll all the way to the bottom of that screen till we get to GPX version preference. We're going to change it to GPX 1.0.1 and click save changes. And that's it. Now the one thing I will mention, that change does not affect the pocket query we are importing right here. Once you hit OK here, it's just going to import it as it was. If we want our pocket query to include those attributes, we now have to go back to the pocket query page and rerun that pocket query and then import it again. So that's one thing I want to bring up. But we're not talking about attributes right now, so it's not too big of a deal. But just so you guys know, if you do want to have attributes and use them in your pocket queries, you're going to have to rerun the pocket query after making that change. So let's talk a little bit about filtering. So why do we want to filter? What does that do for us? Well, as I kind of briefly mentioned before, what filtering is is it allows you to take your entire pocket query. And your pocket query may contain 100 geocaches. It might contain 500. It might contain 1,000 or more. But it allows you to take that entire pocket query and cut a bunch of them out to make it easier to manage. In my mind, the biggest advantage of running a filter on your pocket query is it just makes it more manageable. Whenever you're out there in the field looking through this entire list of here I've got 400 some geocaches let's say I just want to go around my house for a quick run I don't want to look through this entire list of 400 plus geocaches to find the one I'm looking for. It would make it a lot simpler if I could cut this number down to just a few and then load those onto my GPS. So how do we run a filter on our geocache list? There's two ways to do it, and I'm going to show you both. So the first way is manually. And what this means is you just kind of look through your list, find a couple geocaches you want to send to your GPS, and all you're going to do is you're going to select them. And you can do that by just putting a check mark in this blank check box right here. What that means is, yes, I want this geocache to be in my filter list. These are the ones that I want to put on my GPS. So you can do this manually. You can look through the list and go, oh, maybe I want this one, I want this one. So we're, maybe we're going to go on a short cache run today and we're not going to do many. Maybe we're going to do four or five or so. We're just going to look through our list and we're going to select a few that we want to do. Once we get the ones selected we want, we're going to go up here to search. We're going to go to user flag set. You can also hit F8 on your keyboard. It does the exact same thing. We're going to select it. And that's going to filter our list. So we went from 400 some geocaches and we cut it down to a very small list that is very manageable and very simple to send to the GPS. Now, let's say you go, oh, I accidentally I wanted to select some more. You know, I, I hit it at the I hit F8. You know, before I wanted to. Don't worry, nothing's deleted. You can always go back. All you do, let's say you want to go back and select some more geocaches. We're going to go back up here to search then we're going to go to Cancel Filter, and that's going to take us back to our full list. 
So very simple, that's how you do it manually. You just select the, the caches, the ones you want, over here, and then you go up to search, and then you go to user flag set, and any ones that you have checked are going to show up in your filter list. So the second way to run a filter is a lot more fun and it has a lot more options. So before I show you that one, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clear my filter list, what I've got right now. We're going to go back to our full list of 408 geocaches. Now the other way you can filter your geocaches is, is by using the filter tool. And the filter tool is really where you're going to start to see the real power of GSAC come into play. To get into the filter tool, you're going to go up to search, and then you're going to go to filter. As you can see right there, you can also do control F on your keyboard as well. Now once you open up the filter tool, you're going to see all the different types of criteria that you can filter your pocket query by. You can use as few or as many as you want. There are limited, literally an unlimited number of options in here. I recommend just going in here and playing around with it to create a couple filters for yourself to get an idea of what all it can do. To give you a really quick synopsis, I'm going to create a very simple filter. Let's say I'm going out geocaching today and I want to cut down that list of 400 some, pocket, 400 some geocaches that I have to be a much smaller list. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say, okay, I don't want to do any really difficult ones today. I only want it to show me the ones that have a difficulty in terrain of three or less. Maybe I also want, I want to make sure they're all there. I don't want to go on any wild goose chases today. I want to be pretty certain that whenever I go to look for the geocache, I know it's going to be there. So maybe I want to make sure the last found date was after, let's say, February 1st of 2011. I just want to make sure it's been found since February. If it hasn't, eh, maybe it's there, maybe it's not, but you know, I don't want to go on any wild goose chases today, so I just want to make sure it's there. Let's see, maybe I want to filter out a couple other things. Maybe today I only want to do traditional geocaches. I, maybe I don't want to do any multi as they take too long. And then maybe I want to do some earth caches as well. So I'm going to leave earth caches and traditional caches in the list. Also, maybe I don't want to find any micros today. I just want to go after the regular, small, and large geocaches. And then maybe finally, I just want to make sure that the geocache is close to me. I'm going to hop back in here. I'm going to sort by distance. I only want to see the geocaches that are within five miles of my house. So once you get all the different criteria in here that you want to sort by, we're going to go down here and we're going to click the Go button and that's going to filter our list. It should run pretty quickly. And there's my list. I now went from 400 some geocaches and I cut it down to a very short list of just 13. That's a much more manageable list to send to my GPS and it's going to be much easier to find whenever I get out there on the road. So that was just kind of a brief synopsis of how filtering works. You can either do it manually by selecting the caches and the list that you want or you can use the filter tool. That's really the two easiest ways to filter in GSAC. So that's all I'm going to cover today. Again, we're keeping it simple. We're just covering filtering. In the next tutorial, we're going to talk about how to finally get these things onto your GPS. So maybe we created our pocket query here. You know, we cut it down. We fill it into a very easy to manage filtered list. In the next tutorial, we're going to go. We're going to cover how to get this list right here onto my GPS. Again, this is Cash Freak Tim from CashFreak.com. Feel free to head over to my site, check out my posts, follow me on Twitter. If you guys have any questions, comments, go ahead and leave them, and I will see you guys next time.